303 here again. I've got a product review for you today. Now, this has been in my kit inventory for probably around about a year. So it's seen a bit of use and I think I'm pretty well placed to kind of offer an opinion on it. So the company that makes this, what is essentially a shoulder bag, you can see there it has a strap and it also has a carry handle, is a company called Magforce. Now Magforce are not known for being top of the line kit. Um, that being said, I think there's a place for some of these manufacturers that come in a little bit more on the cheap side. I think there's a great deal of snobbery uh, out there around kit and there's an awful lot of people who've got more money than sense. Um, and we've got the mall ninjas who enjoy spending lots and lots of money and showing off their squeaky clean kit which they barely ever use and telling everybody else that their kit's shite and uh, it's not, not up for the job. So personally I think that uh, some of the cheaper, lesser, uh, expensive manufacturers have really got a place for a couple of reasons. Firstly because some of us can't afford the best kit that there is out there. Um, some of us don't want to pay for the best kit that's out there uh, and I put myself in that category in the sense that I I buy I buy my kit for the need for the purpose that I need it rather than uh, you know buying the, the absolute best polar arctic tent when I know that I'm only going to be going to the peak district for a, a night you know I don't see much point um, really um, in, in, in over overbuying when you don't need to. I've got money to spend on other things. That being said, I think there's also a place for good kit. So um, I'm not doing down people that need good kit for the purpose for which it was intended, but yeah, there are plenty of people out there that will run down people who can only afford a certain type of equipment uh, and kit. And I don't think we should be put off by that because everybody's got their own price point, everybody's got their own circumstance. Anyway, rant's over. So Magforce come in at the cheaper end of the kit market, but not at the very cheapest. So this little bag cost uh, £70 from Heine Haynes. Uh, not the cheapest uh, retailer out there, but probably one of the best in terms of the service they offer, the after-sales service they offer, and the speed of delivery are all excellent from Heine's, as anybody will know that's used them at all, ever. Um, this bag the purpose that I bought it for was really as a, a kind of an EDC uh, bag to put in the boot of the car to have a few essentials in for overnight stays for emergencies for you know sort of a bit of a bailout bag kind of thing and really the idea was that this bag would kind of keep me going for around about a day uh, away from home if I needed it to. Uh, there's also a lot of other purposes that you could use this bag for. You could use it for shooting, you could use it for any purpose really that takes you outdoors. You could use it, well, I mean really, you could use it for absolutely anything, quite honestly. It's a, it's a cool bag really. So what we'll do is we will start at the front of the bag and then we're going to go through the various pockets. Now on the way, I'm also going to be looking and sharing some of the stuff that I've got in it that I carry in my EDC. Uh, I haven't been in this bag for a few weeks now, so um, there's going to be some stuff that I'm just going to pull out and then we'll just have a little look at it and uh, I'm not going to get too sidetracked with that stuff because really this is about the bag. So as I said, 70 quid, this is what you get. Firstly, the material is pretty hard wearing. Um, it feels pretty hard wearing. The overall first impressions of the bag are that it's good quality. The zips are, the zips are not not the most robust in the world i mean they're not kind of up to your aim drag bag standards or your you know your british army bergen sort of standards but they are good for fit for purpose they'll do you fine um the material as i said it's good enough it's robust um you've got a velcro patch on the front and then another one on the back there to either help you to put modular items on or bungy morale patches on or whatever you want to do with it um, the one area that i think this bag does come up a little bit short is the uh, is the shoulder strap and it's not even on things like the buckles because they're fine it's it's the actual material of the strap for me it just feels a little bit on the cheap side compared to the material of the bag the strap just feels a little bit cheap but having said that it's worked fine and i can't really fault it it's just a kind of first impression feel thing for me so uh all of the clips are your standard snap clips snap release clips 
Uh, they're all they're all good. They all work for purpose. Sorry, I've got arthritis in my fingers. It's kind of a bit difficult sometimes to open these things. So, um, so the first thing you've got is you've got a flap at the front there, and that flap at the front there is only secured by the snap clip. But as you can see, there's plenty of room in there to put kind of folders if you're using this for the office or college or something, or you know any kind of flat items. You could fit a tablet in there, but you probably wouldn't want it because it's fairly exposed on the inside. But really, that's just a simple, dead simple um, kind of compartment there for anything that's flat. Notebooks would be good, or you know, anything of that ilk. And then in front of that, we've got the first compartment. So what have I got in here? Okay, so I've got a I've got a water filter, a Sawyer mini filter, which I use. I have used. What else have I got? got? Some waterproof matches. Essential. I've got a small folding knife. This is the Spyderco Paramilitary 3. The small one. Perfect knife. Absolutely perfect. This knife for me is a beautiful, beautiful knife. Uh, really, really good EDC knife. Obviously, in England, we do have considerations. Three inch, uh, three inch blade or above. Is not a good idea. Locking blades are not a good idea. Spare that in mind. But paramilitary three, excellent knife. Then I've also got another Spyderco because you can never have too many Spydercos, and this is a smaller knife, but it's very, very, very sharp. That's uh, a nice little knife there. And then I've got this. Now this is kind of in lieu of a multi-tool, really. So this is a Boca Tech Tool, and. Uh, I absolutely love these. These Boca Tech tools are amazing. They're, they they represent such great value for money. This one I actually got really cheap, again from Heine Haynes. And the, the tools on it are amazing. And it really is just something to think about. If you're thinking along the lines of Swiss Army knives, Leathermans, but you're more kind of blade centric in terms of what you want it for. And you're looking for more of a traditional sort of Swiss Army knife type of set up, consider the Boca Tech tool because it's a really, really good little blade. And that's it. So inside this compartment here, you've also got a key lanyard as well, the ever popular and useful key lanyard there. And just to look, go into this here, you can see, oops, you can see that you've got your compartment there. It's pretty much just a simple compartment. There's no kind of like, uh, pockets of the compartment. Again, it's, just a smaller version of the one behind it, this big one here. We turn, turn the bag around and we have another compartment and this one is very similar to the one I've just showed you, however this one has also got some elastic bungee sections which I don't know if you can see them there for kind of putting your items into. See that there? So it's got these bungees and it's actually got one, two, three, four, five of these all the way across there. And they're really useful for kind of securing items kind of in an upright position. They're pretty good. Got a sharpie in there. Behind that we have another section. Oh, and in here, this is pretty full. So in here we've got some light sticks. We've got a small torch, another waterproof power bank, and we've got loads and loads and loads of paracord. Slightly coarser. Right. We've also got some gorilla tape, which is always essential. That's it. So in this pocket, so you've got two sub pockets which are secured to the side of the bag and the inside you can obviously use those to put things in and keep that side from the pocket on at the front of the pocket there it's pretty useful it's very very modular this bag i love it it's got so many little nooks and crannies to put things and the big the, the only problem that you might have is actually remembering where you've put things in the bag so it you do well to kind of like try and remember and navigate your way around this bag because there's, especially if it's full, you might find yourself opening and shutting compartments trying to work out where you put it. So that's kind of a consideration. So on to the main compartment of the bag. So 
Firstly, I have this head torch light, which I use to carry my uh, small Fenix lantern, which I'm currently recharging. So I haven't got that to show you. I will do a review on that. Though. It's a really good little item. I've then got a Stein bleed pack, which is useful. Uh, I carry one of these when I go shooting and I carry one when I'm out in the woods. I carry one pretty much most of the way. Anywhere I go, I carry one of these because I just think they are invaluable. If ever there was a nasty, nasty accident or somebody got hurt, then you need to control what could be a catastrophic bleed. These are excellent. Again, subject perhaps for another review another day. What else do we have? I have some more kind of deodorants. Some of these items are kind of more survival based and some of them are more practical. Uh, we've got uh, a USB lead, we've got a toothbrush and toothpaste. Like I said, overnight kind of stay dependent. I was trying to get the mix with this bag, the balance between kind of survival and kind of shit hit the fan scenario and also of course, you know, everyday use. We've got a really, really good, I love lead lenser gear and this is a super little um, head torch by a lead lenser with um, a just, uh, sorry, a rechargeable battery, integral rechargeable battery. Again, that's another piece of kit for a review another day. Quite glad I'm doing this, there's plenty of uh, video fodder. Right, so we've got some undergrots and we've got a spare top there. And we've got some more undergrots and another spare top. A pair of spare socks. Some my pro from. So that is pretty much it in terms of gear that's in the bag. So to show you the main compartment of the bag, that's what we look like. There is an amazing amount of space in here. Considering this is a fairly small bag, when you open it up, it's TARDIS-like. It's absolutely huge. I'm not entirely certain how much space there is in there, litre-wise, but there's a lot. And it's got those two really deep sub pockets there as well. As you can see, one there and one there on that side. They're really useful. And it's also got another, another zip up compartment on the other side from where the side pockets are. That side is then this, whoops, I'm trying to show you this, this zip up compartment here. And in here, I've got some wet white loo roll, some water purifying tablets, and that's it. So as you can see, this bag has got quite a few different features. What I really like about it is that it's robust and it's tough. It's um, certainly practical for a real variety of different situations, whether you're going to the range, whether you're going to work, whether you're out hunting or whatever, bear in mind it is actually a shoulder bag, pack or shoulder bag I should say. So you are limited to that, you don't have any straps as such, but you know, it depends how far you're going, it depends how much weight you're carrying in it, but you know, you may find that that's sufficient. Other things I like are, I like the modularity of it, I like the fact that it's um, pretty much everything on it is well made, so as I mentioned the material, but also you know all the little fittings and fixtures and things, the zips are adequate, they're not massively robust but they're certainly okay um, and it's just really good in terms of being able to plan out where your kit is in this back there's plenty of scope for that you know if you want to have a compartment for your fire start starting stuff and a compartment for your water stuff you know the first aid bit and so on and so forth and then you've obviously got a huge compartment inside relative to the bag of course which you know is there for your general general items so there's that um, that's really that's really practical and good I do like this carry handle because you don't always want to sling it over your shoulder. You can use that just to carry it alongside you. And um, aside from that, it's quite a smart bag. I mean, really, for the money you're paying for it, money being a you know an object, it's a 70 quid bag. And for 70 quid, I think you're getting quite a lot for your money here. Now, to set, for a lot of people, 70 pounds is more than they would want to pay for a bag like this. For me, that's probably about right, really, what I would pay for a bag like this. Uh, I probably wouldn't want to go much more expensive than that, but for, for that money, this is an absolute gem of a bag. So they're, they're all the things I like about it. The things I don't like about it, um, ah, the strap, I can't really get over the strap. It kind of feels a bit, you know, just a little bit on the cheap side of the material. But like I said earlier, it hasn't let me down and I'm 
sure if you really, you know, if I, if I was that bothered about it, I could get another strap, couldn't I? So, you know, I'm just quite moaning about it. Um, the only other consideration, as I mentioned earlier, is that <laughs> there's a lot of compartments, so you are going to have to remember where you've put what, because otherwise you're going to be stuck because you're just going to end up opening every section, trying to remember, trying to find out what it is you've, uh, you're looking for. So bear that in mind. Uh, that's something that you do need to, to kind of consider when you're planning what you're doing uh, and what you're going to be using it for. So like I said, I think for what it is, I think this bag is a good bag. Um, I would recommend buying it. I wouldn't recommend paying much over 70 quid for it. If you can get it any cheaper, then uh, great. You will find it on... Uh, some of the outdoor shops, Heine Haynes and a few other people um, uh, online will be selling it. In general, it's a great bag. So I'm going to leave it there. Uh, like and subscribe this video if you felt it was useful. That would really help me. And if you've got any comments or if you want to know any questions or anything else about the bag, give us a shout. But like I say, it's had about a year's worth of use and it hasn't just sat in the boot of the car. I've taken it down to the range. It's been thrown about a bit and it still looks really good. So, there we are, I force back.